We've seen so far that a magnetic field exerts a force on a charged particle moving through it. But this force has only been a deflecting force. Since it is perpendicular to the particle's velocity, it doesn't do any work. Here, we'll see ways to actually do work on charges, and to get them to do work for our purposes. In the process of trying to understand this, we will gain new insight into the physics of electric charges and magnetic fields. Here we'll examine a concept with the perplexing name EMF. You'll see where the name comes from, but it's not a great label. Essentially, we'll push on a charge while it's being magnetically deflected, sort of the way you can squeeze a watermelon seed between your thumb and finger and make it shoot away at high speed. That is, if anybody remembers watermelons when they had big seeds, before the so-called seedless watermelons took over the market. This is a picture we've seen before, for review. A particle with a charge positive Q moves to the right through a magnetic field pointing up. Applying the right-hand rule, we see that the field will apply a deflecting force on the particle out of the screen toward you. Now, we see a current flowing into the screen through a magnetic field which is directed up. What is the direction of the force the field will exert on the current? Pause the video and answer for yourself before I talk you through it. Okay, vector IL is into the screen in the direction of the current, and B, the magnetic field, is up. The right-hand rule tells us that IL cross B will be to the right, so that's choice B. The purple arrows here show the direction of the deflecting force the field exerts on the current. You've seen this demonstrated by the swinging wire apparatus. Now, imagine that opposite edges of a current carrying loop are inside this magnetic field, carrying the current in opposite directions, into the screen and out of the screen. The edge carrying the inflowing current is deflected to the right, while the edge carrying the outflowing current is deflected to the left. These forces combine to exert a torque on the loop. It's a short step from that scenario to a direct current motor. Here we see a battery pushing a current around the loop so that the current on the left is going in and the current on the right is coming out. With the magnetic field surrounding the loop directed to the left, the segment on the left is pushed up by the field and the segment on the right is pushed down, torquing the loop to turn clockwise. We can also analyze this system in terms of the torque on the current carrying loop, mu cross b. The loop's magnetic moment vector, curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of the circulating current to let your thumb find that the magnetic moment is down, will receive a torque to align it with the external magnetic field vector, b. The torque mu cross b indeed is in the proper direction. This motor has a split ring commutator to keep torquing the loop in the same direction. Notice that as soon as this loop's magnetic moment aligns with the external magnetic field, the gap in the ring loses contact with the brushes, cutting off the current. The loop's angular momentum keeps it rotating clockwise, carrying the terminals around to contact the brushes once again. But now, the edge of the loop that used to be on the right is on the left, and vice versa, with a loop current creating a magnetic field that is aligned nearly opposite the external magnetic field. The field torques the loop clockwise until its magnetic moment again aligns with the external field, at which point the current cuts off, the loop coasts a little bit, and the cycle continues. But all of that stuff we have seen before. What was I saying about an EMF? Let's imagine now that we have a conducting wire in the magnetic field, but that it's not carrying a current. Instead, the wire is moving to the right through the field with velocity v. Any positive charges in this wire will feel the deflecting force in the direction of positive qv cross b, which is out of the screen toward you. Any negative charges will feel a deflecting force in the direction of minus qv cross b, 
into the screen away from you. Since the wire is a conductor, some charge has to be mobile. Positive charge will build up on the end of the wire in front of the screen, and negative charge will build up on the opposite end behind the screen. This Lorentz force is acting like an electric field along the wire, pointing out of the screen toward you. This does work on the positive and negative charges, pushing them apart against their natural attraction for each other. This is the setup for a more rigorous derivation. A charge Q moves a length L along a conducting wire that itself moves across a magnetic field B at speed V. Opposite charges congregate at opposite ends of the wire until the force QE from the electric field E that they set up exactly cancels the force QVB from the magnetic field. So an electric field is being maintained inside the conductor. It cancels not a real electric field, but instead a sort of mock electric field created by moving through the magnetic field. As far as the particle knows, it's a real electric field. The force moving the charge along the wire has a magnitude QVB. Moving the charge a distance L does work in the amount QVBL. The amount of work done per unit charge, then, is just VBL. This is in units of volts, but it's not a potential difference. A potential difference is the work done by a potential, that is, by a conservative force on something changing position in the field. The work done here is done by a non-conservative force. The magnetic field deflects the charges, and then some unspecified external force must keep pushing the wire to maintain its velocity. Thus, rather than calling the work per charge a voltage, though I sometimes will, or a potential difference, we just call it an EMF. Here we have aligned all the vectors in their optimal orientations to maximize the work done. The wire is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the travel direction, which in turn are perpendicular to each other. The relevant dot and cross products are consequently just the products of the vector's magnitudes. The deflecting force is a cross product, and the work it does is a dot product. The initials EMF stand for electromotive force. It is electromotive, but it certainly is not a force. The units are wrong. It isn't a potential, as it isn't conservative. So for lack of a better term, we call it EMF. Now, as an aside, here is a little vector algebra. The EMF, V cross B dot L, is what is known as a scalar triple product of vectors. The input is three vectors, and the result is a scalar. Its value is the volume of the parallelopiped defined by the three vectors. A cross B is the area vector of the base, and its dot product with the slant height vector C gives the volume. If you begin with the scalar triple product of A, B, and C in that order, it is equal to the cyclic rearrangements that maintain that order. A, B, C is the same as B, C, A is the same as C, A, B. Exchanging the order of any two reverses the sign of the product. Let's turn our attention back to the current carrying wire inside the magnetic field. Recall that a current through the wire, into the screen and away from you, causes the field to push the wire to the right. But the wire moving to the right causes the field to deflect positive charges toward you and negative charges away from you, which is a current out of the screen toward you. Notice this is opposite the direction of the current that drove the motion. This back EMF reduces the current in the wire. Consider this, if the wire is held fixed so that it can't move, it will draw more current than if it is allowed to move across the field. The practical manifestation of this is that an electric motor draws more current when it moves slowly than when it moves fast. That means more current when it is starting up or when a load slows it down. It doesn't take much current to maintain the motor at a high speed. If you think about it, that's exactly what you would expect from considering conservation of energy. 
we've explored how a current carrying loop inside a magnetic field acts as a motor. Here we see the complementary process. A conducting loop rotating inside a magnetic field acts as a generator. Turning this loop in the clockwise direction sends the side on the right to the left and the side on the left to the right. This sends a current into the screen on the right and out of the screen on the left. The motional EMF is greater in this orientation because the wire segments are moving more directly across, that is, more perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So the magnitude of the current depends on the orientation of the loop in the field. Now we can look at the same picture I showed earlier of a loop rotating between the poles of a U magnet. But this time, imagine that the loop is being mechanically driven rather than powered by a current. Rotating the loop clockwise causes, by QV cross B, a current to the back on the right and toward the front on the left. This current flows into the top terminal of the battery, which is the positive terminal, and out of the bottom terminal of the battery, which is the negative terminal. This current would charge up the battery. Clockwise rotation of the loop is the same direction that the current from the battery would cause the loop to turn. Here, we see that when the loop rotates in that direction, it provides a back EMF against the battery voltage, reducing the current and thus its power consumption.